Hey guys, as you know, I've now got a wonderful Aligu Mars resin printer, producing some phenomenal prints. And with these prints, I've been able to do some fantastic lost wax casting. But what about the holy grail of casting, castable resins? Well, I've reached out to a lot of companies that produce castable resins, asking if I could review their products. And Power Resins were very prompt to reply to me, sent me this, their power cast burn. Oh yes, castable resin. I've got goosebumps just looking at it. Now I've been hearing that castable resins tend to have a bad name. Yes, they're costly, but many people have said to me that they don't work. Well, I'm new to resin printing and I'm just a novice caster, but I'm happy to give it a go. Like I say, this stuff isn't cheap, coming in at 100 US dollars for 250 milliliters. I could buy a whopping 12 bottles of the standard Aligu printer resin for the same price as one liter of the Powercast Burn. There's some useful information on their website, including printer settings for many different printers, though the Aligu Mars isn't one of them. But I'm sure that will change quickly, and I'll certainly be providing the company with the settings that I'm gonna be using. Power resins say that there's no odour, and I have to agree this is true. It's certainly very viscous, being quite thick and gloopy stuff. The lack of printer setting data did cause me lots of troubles, and I won't bore you with all the failures that I had, but I did have several failed attempts with various settings before turning to my own subscribers for help. Of course, they didn't let me down, and the solution was a simple but critical one. Priming the build plate. Again, I tried a few methods, but the easiest was this. Dip a small brush in the resin and spread this evenly across the plate. Keep it thin, as thin as you can manage. Let it stand for five minutes so the brush marks seep together. Then shove it under a UV light for 10 or 15 minutes. I wanted to be ambitious with my testing, and some of you may recall Dick from Alaska. He'd written to me recently and asked if I could have a bash at casting some scaled down locomotive build plates, which comprised mainly of letters and numbers. I wouldn't even be able to print something that detailed on an FDM printer, but I figured a resin printer would easily be up to the task. But would it cast? I also fancied having another bash at my John Wick coin. The one I lost PLA casted was two inches in diameter. This time I wanted to have a go at half in that size. A full build plate doesn't slow down a resin printer in the same way as it would an FDM printer, so I loaded the plate up. Using the G2 box slicer, I created a profile for the power cast burn, and these are the settings that I used. As long as the build plate is primed, they work fine for the Aligu Mars. Printing time was around five hours, and after leaving the prints to drip for a short while, I prized these free and washed them thoroughly in methylated spirits. There's no need to UV cure the Powercast Burn finished prints, so a simple shake and some air quickly dried these off. And they looked excellent. I couldn't fault the quality printing. I cocked up the support position in a little, but that was nothing to do with the resin. Cutting away the supports was easy. The material is slightly more plastic-like than the Aligu resin I've been using, but it cuts easily and could certainly be a little fragile, so care is needed. I cleaned up the edges with very fine sandpaper, and this was effortless. Very little pressure is needed to ensure a nice flush finish. I decided to keep some of the supports to act as sprues. To thicken them a little, I dipped these into molten wax. This in turn helped me to attach the prints easily to a wax sprue. From here it's just the standard investment casting you've seen me do before. Investment plaster is mixed and poured into a flask. The flask then goes into the burnout oven. But hang on, there's another step needed here. When wax melts, it becomes a liquid, just like PLA. So with lost wax and lost PLA casting, 
the flask is placed into the oven button side down. That way everything can seep out of the plaster. As I was using a wax brew, that's exactly what I did. However, I understand that castable resin, when heated, actually becomes a gas. This would become trapped in a button down flask, so the flask needs to be turned button side up. As for me, both positions were required. I went button side down for an hour, then flipped everything 180 for the remainder of the burnout. Notice that the plaster is fine. Some folks told me that the plaster breaks up with castable resins. Well, it hasn't happened to me yet. Not with the power cast burn at any rate. Now, this pour looks smooth enough, but the casting gods have been mucking me about just a few seconds before. Again, I'd lost all electric power for a couple of minutes and everything cooled down a little too much for my liking but things still seem to go well. I think you'll agree, these castings don't look too bad. Some of the letters are less than two millimeters tall and they can still be easily read, but things weren't perfect. Some of the edges were a little rough and some of the letters were partly filled with metal. I had no choice but to try again. This time I decided to introduce more thick support points around the patterns to act as sprues as well as plenty of the usual supports. It makes sense to build in your sprues if you can, and the G2Box software makes this easy. When it came to printing this time, I wasn't so lucky. At some point, the prints fell from the build plate into the resin, so the print completely failed. I reasoned that maybe the patterns were too heavy. So I primed the plate a second time, and then again, and again, Four times in total I primed the plate, each time UV curing between coats. And maybe four coats is overkill, maybe two or three coats is enough, but that's something you'll need to test for yourself. Since priming with four coats, I've had no printing issues at all. Again, look at the print quality. With good priming and proper supports, they're as good as I could hope for. I think you'll agree these castings look even better than last time. The edges are better and there's no trap metal in the lettering. For something so small, the quality is excellent and every word and number can clearly be read. These are now off to Alaska. I could tidy the edges up a little better than I have done here, but I know Dick is a skilled modeler with metalworking abilities that easily surpass mine. He'll be looking for precise sizing, and on these circular build plates, the edges are actually beveled, so I'll leave the clean up to him. And some of you may think this sounds like a poor excuse and that I'm just being lazy, but let me tell you, you're absolutely right. Sorry, Dick but I did roughly true up the edges of these John Wick coins and gave them a spin in my tumbler to polish them. There's certainly a vast improvement on my last attempts. This is the first time I've cast something that actually feels like a coin. It's the right size, it's the right shape, it's the right thickness. It feels like a real coin. To be honest, everything I've cast before seems more like a hockey puck, but with a resin printer and castable resin, it's really possible to make a coin sized coin. So how did the power cast burn fare? Well, perfectly really. There's an addition issue with the build plate, which is probably caused by the weight of the gloopy resin, but with effective priming, this really isn't an issue. The prints are excellent and could potentially be improved with finer layer heights and a little fine tuning of the printer settings. But for me, things are excellent the way they are. 
The resin seemed to burn away cleanly, with no residue that I've noticed, and there were no obvious signs of plaster cracking or falling apart. And the resulting castings were the most precise and detailed that I've achieved so far. And don't forget I'm a self-taught novice with largely homemade equipment. Yes, the resin is pricey, but it's a specialised product with a limited market, so it's sort of understandable. How it rates against other castable resins in terms of price and performance, I can't say yet. Hopefully, as time goes on, I'll be able to review a few others. But I can say it performed perfectly in my tests. Give me a lifetime supply of this stuff and lock me in my workshop, and I'd be a happy man creating all manner of things. In short, it did exactly what I wanted it to do, and it did it well. So there you go, guys. Power cast burn. It works. I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. If you want any more information, feel free to drop me a line, or maybe use the link that's in the description below. So that's it for now, guys. Take care, and thanks for watching.